it is a gorgeous January day today and I'm so excited to show you around because the hellebores are starting to bloom. I've got my plot looking pretty good, um, working really hard on it this last month to get it ready for the new season. Uh, but also today I need to take a look at my apple tree because it's time for its annual prune. Honestly, it's so good to be here today in this glorious sunshine, but I've had to come out into the shade a little bit so I can actually see you a bit better. Um, so yes, I'm just here at the apple tree, giving it its general maintenance prune, just to keep it in a good height. Um, I'm looking out for things like diseases and to remove all of this upward growth that only gives you foliage and no fruit. So I won't be going into great detail on my pruning today because I've already got a separate video on that that I will link in the description below. Um, but yeah, January, it's been an interesting month actually. It's been quite chilly, much like December was, although not quite as cold. You remember in the middle of December, I don't think I really went over it in my end of the month video, but it got really cold for a couple of weeks and it just didn't thaw. I think my polytunnel registered minus 4.5, I think, which is quite mild compared to some people that experienced a lot colder temperatures, but it's pretty good. I mean, we haven't had a really cold winter for a couple of years and we've had quite a few frosts in January and it's good. I like working in cold weather and it, you know, it kills off all the aphids and things and we, we need cold. We need a cold winter. It also tells the plants to go to sleep. So um, yeah, I've actually been quite enjoying it because <laughs> I just layer up and I, I love working in, in the cold. Um, so yeah, it's uh, been a good month. I've been really, really productive because I've been mulching. You know, I, I managed to clear out all my beds pretty much and I've been round giving them a good layer of compost to sort of give them loads of nutrients and feed the soil for this year's um, crops. I've also pruned my hedges, so the hedge that runs along on this side I've completely pruned um, and it's just been great to crack on with loads of jobs whilst it's been dry because we've had a wet few weeks in December, towards the end of December and that was pretty miserable. <laughs> All of my bulbs are now in and yeah, I'm just uh, really excited because I'm starting to feel on top of my jobs. So yes, how's your winter been so far? Let's cut you off, I don't want you. And this one can come down. I also cleaned my secretaires the other day and it feels so satisfying to have a proper clean pair of secretaires again. And this is what I want. I want a tree that I can do most of the pruning from the ground. I don't like being on the ladder around here. I have to actually be really careful where I tread because I've got lots of hellebores under this tree, which I'll show you later. So I'm just going to go around, finish my pruning, and I'll catch up with you shortly. I think that should do for now. There's still a few right at the top that um, I'll get to another time because it's about three o'clock now and the daylight will soon be dwindling. But the days are getting noticeably longer now, which is brilliant. It means that it won't be too long until I can get here after work and that spring will soon be here. But there are signs of spring everywhere. I've got bulbs popping up all over and um, yeah lots of things are starting to shoot from the ground already which is great so um, let's start the tour and see what's going on in January. Now I know I said that I've been tidying up but the plot is still looking pretty chaotic because you know how it is you can't get tidy without making a mess <laughs> um, but yes you can see all the beds are looking pretty bare now. I've moved that huge pile of comp which I'll explain a little bit later um, but yes I've been round put like mulch down and all these hedges it's well, it's quite tricky to tell because my neighbor hasn't quite finished their side that I can't get to um, but 
that hedge is looking a lot neater gosh look at the stem on this blueberry bush it's such a fantastic plant because even in the middle of winter it's giving you some interest and all these buds look not far off bursting open it was such a good year for blueberries last year hope i have a similar one this year i just remembered there is actually a job that i want to do and that is to mulch my blueberry bush with pine needles now blueberries as you may know love acidic conditions and that's one of the reasons why it's really handy to grow them in containers because that way you can control the type of soil they grow in so this is planted with ericaceous compost but what i'm going to do to just boost that acidity is to mulch the plant with these pine needles that i collected from beneath a pine tree because they're naturally acidic they're going to break down and then put a little bit more of that acidity into the soil that they're growing in there are a few other leaves mixed in with this but i'm not too worried at all about that and it's just going to help retain the moisture prevent the weeds from coming up and generally try and keep my blueberry quite happy and also it looks a lot better than staring at the bare soil Of course you could do this with your Christmas tree clippings if you've not yet composted them and use the pine needles from that. There we go. The strawberry cages haven't had any attention. That's probably uh, not a priority but it'll probably happen at the end of February. So yeah, not a lot of flowers to see but they are about and I'll, I'll come to them in a bit. Here is where I planted all my alliums a few weeks ago, just after Christmas. And we're gonna have lots of squash growing through there. I think the plan is that this side will be mostly fruit and veg this year. So I'll still be growing quite a lot of fruit and veg and what's in the tunnel. And then we'll have a lot of space for flowers for the wedding. But if we just go down to ground level, My hellebores are on their way. I actually haven't pruned these old leaves yet, which is something you can do. It helps prevent um, black spot disease from spreading. And the new leaves come up just after the flowers have come up. So, oh my gosh, what a gorgeous color. I think this is a new one that I bought last year. I don't remember the name yet, we'll wait till it opens and find out. And further down this side, we've got my raspberry canes. These are autumn fruiters, which means I'll be soon pruning their stems right down to the ground. I just tend to do it in February. But look what we've got here. And these were making an appearance when we had that minus six degrees. <laughs> Some rhubarb, my early rhubarb already coming up and just next to it signs of spring look we've got some daffodils coming oh and just behind that i've just spotted some more hellebores that are actually in bloom i apologize my battery on my microphone has died yet again i don't think it likes this cold temperature and i'm just not being very good at remembering to charge it so um, I'm just going to have to rely on my phone microphone, which shouldn't be too bad, but just uh, bear with me. <laughs> so here we are. We've got some first, the first hellebores coming up. It's a really light pink, this one, with a bit of a speckle in the centre. So, so pretty. It does take a few years for them to really bulk up, but once they do, Oh my gosh, these are going to be about a foot wide. The clump of flowers, that is, not, not each flower. <laughs> that would be silly. <laughs> I've still got quite a bit of tidying up to do underneath the tree. Get rid of all of that debris, uh, which I'll do again sort of late February once all the hibernating insects have finished sleeping uh, and as the ground warms up for spring. And besides, I want to be able to enjoy my hellebores as much as I can. There we go, you can see a little bit better of my trimmed hedge over that side. 
the birds are really going for it today and the robins keep following me around the plot. Let's go the opposite way around the wildlife corner this time. Not that there's a lot to see, lots of debris and a frozen bird bath. But, you know, things have kept their leaves like this um, salvia and I've got quite a few lupins here still in the green. Now this, just by my stepping stones, is one of my favourite hellebores. If I just remove some of this debris and clippings. Oh gosh, there's even a rotten apple. <laughs> I really need to tidy up around here. Um, let me just remind myself of the name. It's one that I got from Ashwood Nurseries when I visited the other year. Rihanna's Ruby. At least I'm pretty sure that was from there. And it's got really, really dark um, coloured flowers. They're just coming up now. Be a few weeks yet until we get the full display. But I just love the foliage. They've got that really marbled, mottled sort of leaf. Obviously these are last year's leaves, so these need cutting off and then we'll have ne this year's um, leaves come straight up after these flowers but oh my gosh I'm really looking forward to these. Now from this angle you can see just how bare the plot now is and I've been round and mulched lots of my beds. Over there I've got some clippings from that back border which I'll discuss in a minute um, but I harvested all my carrots yeah, I harvested some carrots a few weeks ago, thinking I wasn't going to have any because I sowed them quite late, which usually isn't a problem. I think I sowed them sort of the start of June. But then we had that heat wave when it got to about 39 degrees, not long after. So although they germinated, it was really hard to keep them alive. And they just they had really stunted growth and just didn't really thrive. But I did find that one batch, the red core, uh, which one is it? Shante, I think um, they did really well but unfortunately despite putting up the netting for prevention of the carrot root fly it was still got in or still managed to affect my crop I don't know if they were overwintered from the previous year I must get some nematodes to treat the soil to eradicate them uh, but yes that was a bit upsetting because it wouldn't usually bother me, but the grubs started to come out of the carrots when I was in the kitchen chopping them and I just thought, oh no, I can't, I can't do it. You know, and it just really puts you off eating something. So unfortunately, I didn't get any carrots. And in the carrot bed, I've temporarily planted this Senecio. Um, it does have a new botanical name now, but I can't remember what it is. Um, I just thought this would be great for the foliage in my wedding flowers because it's got a gorgeous sort of silvery sheen to it and it likes really free draining soil in a sunny situation so um it's going to love it in this carrot bed so i may leave it here this year we shall see um and next to that look first signs of my tulips are starting to poke through in their pots in previous years i've gone a little bit bonkers on the spring bulbs but I've kept it quite uh, reserved this year because I'm saving my money for my autumn flowers and I've got quite a few new dahlias to share with you that I'll be growing this year. So I didn't really buy many bulbs, but I did buy quite a few tulips and I just chucked them all in this one pot. Let me show you. Because these pots here still have last year's tulips in them, they may or may not bloom because they're not really that reliable as a perennial. But this tub here, um, I just shoved a load of new bulbs in there. I probably should have divided it between more pots, but my nice terracotta ones are already full. And so this pot is going to be absolutely jam packed with tulips in the spring. And I'm really excited and hopefully they'll still bloom OK and not be too full. But look, we've got more coming up here. And that looks a bit like um, the grape hyacinth. What's it called? That one. We shall see. Another thing that I've been working on this month is my composting. You may remember I had that big pile of compostables on a bed that I didn't have room for and I thought well I'll make a new bin, sort it all out and then I'll clear the bed. And whilst I have made a new bin it's only kind of 
thrown together, shall we say. Um, essentially, that's my original compost bin. This is where that crate next to it was. So I just dragged that down and then I shoved a pallet at the back there. And then that's got all of my new fresh compostables in it. And this bin here is what I'm most excited about because it's got lots of gorgeous black compost in it, which is ready to go and mulch my beds and to use for my growing this year, which I'm really excited about. Um, so I'll go, you know what, I might, I might at the end of this, dig some out and um, spread some on a bed because I just really want to see and get my hands into it and see what it's like. So yeah, it's a bit temporary, woo, but it works. And if it works for you, do it. <laughs> I've just spotted some more hellebores. I think these ones are actually in bloom as well. Let's have a look. To the side of my shed is this border that I planted, I think it was last year, wasn't it? Mixed it all up. So we've got some grasses, some hookahs, hellebores, some ivy, and this climbing hydrangea. But underneath we've got some hellebores in bloom. Oh my gosh, look at that. What a beauty. Is that Rihanna's ruby? I think it might be. Oh no, I've got a label. Got a label. Ashwood Nursery one, what's it called? Uh, Charmer. Hellebore Charmer. Stunning. There's such big flowers on those. I love this hookah as well, how it matches so well in that dark purpley kind of colour. Gosh, the compost really sunk in here. I have a feeling that sometimes the rats like to dig through this which is a bit gross, but they do like being near sheds. And this one, I don't think we've got any flowers on yet. No, but I can see some birds down there. Another job that I managed to complete this month was to try and get the ivy off of this tree. This is a Puna spinosa, it's a black thorn. And although I love my ivy, <laughs> and I let it grow in other areas of the allotment. Having it grow up trees isn't really such a good idea because eventually it will weigh down the top of that tree and could very slowly kill it off. So what I decided to do was perform the uh, ring of life, I think it's sometimes called, where essentially you cut away the thick branches of ivy that are clinging to the tree for about a foot of the um, height and do that all the way around the tree. And um, by doing this, what will happen is it will hopefully um, kill off the ivy that's growing up the tree only. And those leaves will then start to brown, crispen and fall away. And as long as I keep this ring clear, then it should have no problem in staying ivy free in future. Ivy is really beneficial for your garden because the birds eat the fruits the flowers are pollinated by the bees in very late summer going into autumn and it creates a dense sort of nesting area particularly for birds like robins and wrens and it just creates that cover that you know in the winter time you don't really get much in the way of evergreens that are British natives so yes I love ivy uh, don't get me wrong but I just need to get it off this tree Ivy does get a bad rep in gardens and I can understand why, but it's important that we can grow just a little bit of it, control it in some way in our gardens. But yes, you can see here I, I did get out some quite big chunks <laughs> um, and left a nice clear ring, which I may need to actually take a bit more off. I realise now that it's probably only about less than a foot, so I might have to go back to that. But it's done and hopefully it should probably take a few months for the above canopy to start to die off, but we'll keep an eye on that. Oh, look at the pond, frozen over, completely solid and has been probably for a couple of days now. But it is starting to thaw, I can see it's uh, not as dense as it once was. And uh, I have seen the fish, they're still fine. I came when it was actually dark one day and I shone my light and I could see them still swimming about underneath the ice, so that's good to know. Um, yeah, they're still in there. Otherwise, the plot's looking... Well, pretty bare. I'm not growing any garlic this year, so I haven't got any of that in. And this side is where I'm going to start a new little project. And it's quite exciting, but also 
not very edible. So we've got my really big hedge here and not a lot grows in front of it in terms of crops. I could do things like uh, beetroot and lettuce, but it gets fairly shaded and it's really tricky to keep on top of because the brambles grow through it. I also get lots of suckers from the pruna spinosa tree that's down in the bottom. Um, so I'm thinking, since I'm growing so many flowers this year, I need some foliage to fill my bouquets. And I just thought, you know what, if I put a few different shrubs down here, then it will give me lots of foliage to play with. It's going to be less maintenance. And if the brambles grow through it, it's fine. I can just cut them out and, you know, keep it, keep it controlled. So that's my rough plan. So um, watch this space. I'll probably do a video on the uh, foliage things at some point. But yeah, that's what I've been working on and just trying to clear it out at the same time. At the top of the plot, obviously my dahlia beds, they're completely empty now because I lifted those and they're now in storage. One thing I could do is at the end of next month is prune this back really, really hard. This is the origeron. It's the only few months when it isn't blooming. <laughs> Um, this actually makes great kindling for my Kelly kettle for making my cups of tea But I do also leave some out because the birds love to use this for their nests in the spring And inside the polytunnel Things are starting to look a little bit sad from all the frost uh, But my seedlings I've been pricking out some of the uh, nigella love in a mist So they're all looking quite happy that is the honesty that I pricked out. Or oh, did I sow these direct? I may have sown these. And uh, we've got some of the older honesty here. It's soon be ready to plant out actually. But otherwise it's looking a little bit mushy. Look at my poor pelagoniums. <laughs> I mean, I know I should have brought them indoors, but I just didn't want to bring pests in again because I did that last year and it was awful. But I think as long as the stems are still uh, alive, if I give this a hard prune, they might be okay because the, the compost is quite dry and that's the main thing for them is that you keep them dry. But look, this one is still fine despite. And look, my chilies, I left a few chilies in here as an experiment and of course they look dead dead as a dodo but this one this one's still pretty green which is actually really interesting i've also got in here some miscanthus because i want to collect the seed from this and try growing some miscanthus because i just love these little feathery seed heads it's uh, of this grass oh it's so noisy with that hedge trimmer on the go but yes, it's a good time to get your hedge, hedges trimmed before the birds start nesting. And this is how the plot is looking now at the end of January 2023, start of a new growing year. Really exciting. Bit of a mess down that bottom, isn't it? <laughs> Never mind, we're getting there. I'm so glad we've had a couple of dry, sunny days this January because it's meant that I can get on top of some of these big jobs and most of them are done now you know i've done the apple tree today the last remaining big job is to prune all those sycamore shoots can you see behind the polytunnel uh, that's quite a big job that's the last one that i need to do and that's quite urgent because the birds will soon start nesting and i've seen my blue tit around i wonder if he's been poking his head inside the uh the nest box that i have in the tree for him and her so yes, I'm feeling quite on top of it. I mean, the plot's still a mess, <laughs> but that's okay. We've still got months and months until things are gonna actually go in the ground, but I will be starting some seeds sort of mid to late February. And then before you know it, it's gonna be spring. The tulips will be out, the sun will be shining, the birds will be tweeting. And yeah, I'm so excited for this year. So yes, thank you for joining me on this cold January day. I appreciate there's not much to see, but it's nice just to check in and see you guys. So uh, yeah, thanks for joining me and I will see you next time.